guys, welcome back to my channel, it's me again. We have a lot of Irma shenanigans to get through in today's video. Please make sure you watch all the way until the end. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about everything. So let's just get straight into it. I feel like a lot of the times we do talk about the categories you need to spend in um, in order to kind of get to one-to-one -one spending quicker. Um, but I also feel like for people in very competitive boutiques, maybe you need some new ideas or on where to spend obviously those of you who have essays <laughs> you're not really affected by this but for some if you're like me so like you need to go and score quickly or you live somewhere that's very competitive i feel like you should look at these categories so let's go through all of the categories that are known for having the commissions as most of you know essays do not get commissions on the quota bags meaning the Burke and kelly and the constance and another thing, essays in general, depending on where they are in the world, but in general, they have an individual commission and a pulled commission at MS. So let's go through the categories. I'm going to give comments on each one. Let's start off with equestrian because that's obviously Hermes's heritage. Um, I don't own, own horses. I know that there's some people in Tanzania who have um, horses, um, but I feel like this is just a very niche category. I think if you're super passionate about horses, you're so lucky because you will absolutely score quickly in this category because obviously it's their heritage, it's their history. They're super, super passionate about it and they, they, you know, they really, really care about it. So I feel like if you do have a horse or you are interested in horses, this is definitely something for you. I don't have a horse. I think they're beautiful. So this isn't for me. Let's move on to the next one, which um, would be ready to wear. I said this before, no one's checking for Hermes' clothing, but if you're trying to score a bag, you need to start checking for their clothing. Their clothing is also very expensive, but I do think that if you go in there saying, hey, I'm gonna buy something for my husband um, from men's ready to wear, I'll buy something for myself from men's ready to wear, and then maybe then be like, oh, okay, I've bought a few things for my husband or my boyfriend, and I'm gonna buy something for myself. And then you could also be like, oh, oh by the way, do you have like a Kelly 32 or do you have a Constance? Just saying, you could put it out there. Ready to wear is something which MS cares about. MS has invested a lot of time and money and effort into making their clothes desirable and they definitely want to kind of grow that part of their business. So that is something to think about. The next um, commission rich category is fine jewelry. We talk about fine jewelry a lot. Fine jewelry is huge, very, very important. There are lots of super expensive fine jewelry options, but there are others that are not as ridiculous and that maybe should get you that offer quickly. I think, you know, you should look for the fine jewelry that has, you know, lots of diamonds in it. You should look for, you know, the gold fine jewelry pieces. You should look for those pieces that, you know, it looks expensive. You know, it is expensive. It looks expensive and it also looks like something that maybe they don't get every single day. So I would, I feel like with fine jewelry, it's a tough one. Rings are an option, but I feel like bracelets would just get you, bracelets are just a little bit more out there and I feel like they'd probably just get you the offer quicker, particularly if you're focusing on, again, diamonds and gold and things like that. So that's something to think about. Um, one strategy that a lot of people have said, particularly on Instagram and Facebook, is go into the store, you know, buy something from fine jewelry, tell them you'll be back in a few days buy something else that's small, perhaps because you've already bought the fine jewelry will be in the system and then ask for a bag. I do think that's a strategy that's like worth chasing. My only worry would be for someone like me, I would be in that particular city with the store for like a, a small amount of time. I might not have like a few days to dedicate to scoring. I would prefer to score there and then. So I would maybe do something like this, pick up some, a piece from fine jewelry and then maybe pick up something else that's small. So maybe buy a fine jewelry bracelet and then maybe buy something just, you know, very small, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a fashion jewelry piece or something else that would just increase your spend, but maybe isn't necessarily from a commission category and then ask for a, a bag. OK, but ask in a way that is strategic. I don't feel like you should be like, I want to buy a Kelly bag right now. I feel like you could be like, oh, yeah, you know, I really like this, you know, fine jewelry bracelet. It's so beautiful. I also wanted to know if I could get a Kelly. I'd love to take it with me because I feel like you know, I'd want it as well, you know, with this fine jewelry piece, something like that. I make it sound better than the way I made it sound, okay, but something like that. Um, another category that is also huge is homewares. Um, now, this one for me is easy because I love homeware stuff, like I love things for the house and things like that. So the the plates, the their trays, all of the, like the homeware stuff, so you know what I'm talking about. That is commission rich. Another part of homewares that people don't really talk about is the furniture that Hermes makes. It is horrifically expensive, but I do think that there's a huge opportunity there 
if you're ready to spend. There are a few bits and pieces from the furniture um, slash office section of the website. Um, I saw a lamp here, which wasn't, I mean, it was, it's a very expensive lamp, but compared to like the $30,000 um, sofas and chairs, it definitely was much better. So I think maybe something like this, maybe you could go pick out some furniture for your office at home. Maybe so those of you who are working from home, maybe you could go buy a lamp or something like that. And then, you know, buy a lamp, buy a piece of, you know, fine jewelry, and then ask for a bag. These are, are categories where the essay will get commissioned. They're also categories that Hermes cares a lot about. They really do care about homeware. They care about, you know, furniture. These are things that they want to build on. Another thing that I really like about the furniture category um, in order to get you um, up there for pre-spending is the fact that it shows a lifestyle. It shows that you're not just there like running and hunting for a bag and just trying to get, get a bag. Of course, we're all there to get bags. It is what it is, but it shows a lifestyle. And I think that's really important for these brands. We don't talk about timepieces enough um, on this channel and we need to. Hermes really do think that they are like top dogs in the watch world, even though they're like other top dogs like Patek Philippe, Audemars and Rolex. Hermes want to be taken seriously. Hermes have, have invested a lot of time and effort into building the timepiece side of their business. So the watches and things like that. I do think that this is another underrepresented like commission category that people don't really talk about. So I wanted to talk about it today. Um, th there are some watches that are very expensive, but there are others that are not crazy. There's this one here. I think this is called the Nantucket. I think this is like $7,000 in the US. I mean, that's not excessively ridiculous um, as the way I thought. Because at first I was like, oh my god, they're all going to be like $30,000 a piece. They're not. Watches, so you could look at this. So maybe an idea would be something like this. You could go into the boutique and be like, hey, I want to buy a watch for my husband. I want to buy a watch for myself. Because they do make men's watches and women's watches. Again, I feel like that is just a great way of getting that spend up there very quickly. And then you could ask for your bag. Just make it sound better than the way I made it sound earlier in the video. Make it sound a little bit more... A bit, a bit a bit more softer but make it clear that you're buying those watches and you'll buy them and they should give you a bag for your the hard work that you're putting in in order to reach the spend quota so um yeah there's watches as well um, i'd love to know what you guys think about watches because of course i think a lot of people and i would feel the same way um because my dream watch is from cartier it's the panther de cartier watch in me the medium side I would kind of be feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm taking money away from the Pantelot de Cartier watch and putting it towards Hermes, and what if you don't get an offer? I feel like if you buy a watch, let alone two watches, one for you and one for your spouse or your boyfriend, you're absolutely going to get an offer. Because I live in a country that doesn't have a boutique, and frankly, I live on a continent that doesn't have a boutique, I think about things, I look at things very strategically. <laughs> I know some of you are like, oh my god, your ideas are so hilarious, some of you have told me as well. Um, it is what it is. I feel like if I lived somewhere where there was a boutique, I could build a relationship. I don't really have that um, like luxury to build a relationship with an essay. So I need to look at these categories and say, where would I want to spend my money? I would personally just prefer to spend money where I feel like I would get the best return and out of things that I like. I want to talk about exotic SLGs because I don't think that essays necessarily earn a big commission from them, but I do think that they go towards their like sales targets and they are so expensive. So those of you who actually like exotic SLGs like me, I love them. I think they're super beautiful. Look into those ones because some of those are like 20K, 18K. I think those jig, I think it's called jig. Can someone correct my pronunciation because I have no idea how they're pronounced. I think they're called the, the jig clutch or the jig wallet, whatever. Those jig, um, I think it's called jig, right? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Those um, J-I-G-E <laughs> clutch, clutches and wallets in exotic are super, super expensive. I almost fell off my chair when I saw the price of one of them a few weeks ago. I was like, oh my goodness. I personally don't like those ones, but I think you could look at those like ex exotic SLGs and go from there. I think some of the pocket Kellys in Croc are like 8,000. You could, you know, maybe try that and then pick something else up and then see if you get an offer. You could go, go from there basically and see, but obviously exotics are, you know, very expensive, um, super, super expensive. And they're just going to put you in a different bracket, I think, from people who are just spending a lot of money in the sort of general like small leather goods in terms of the general leather um 
some of you who are from Canada were like, like telling me, oh my God, Canada is so competitive. So I'm going to talk about Canada later on um, towards the end of the video. But um, something that I have noticed, is like a lot of you have said that like, like the US particularly, like leather goods, spending in leather goods counts towards um, your one-to-one -one spend. Whereas some people in Europe have said that it doesn't and many people in Australia and Asia have said that it doesn't. So I think a lot of this just depends. I feel like in those very competitive stores in the US, I still feel like spending a lot of money in, you know, small leather goods or buying lots of silks and toilets, I still feel like that, will, that won't that will put you ahead of someone who comes in and says, I'm going to buy this fine jewelry bracelet, I'm going to buy this like exotic, you know, compact compact kelly whatever that person is probably still going to get an offer faster than someone who's spending 20k buying silks and buying you know twillies and things like that so i do feel like it matters but maybe it doesn't matter but it also depends on where you are in the world so that's also something to think about there seems to be a kind of change in the way the picton 18 and the mini lindy are seen i've noticed that people um, in different jurisdictions in the world are saying that the Picatin 18 is not actually easy to get anymore. I believe in the US it's like $2,700 in Clemence leather. I think the Mini Lindy in the US is like $6,100 in Clemence leather as well. Um, I mean, when you think of these two bags, these two bags should be available to purchase in the store. And in some parts of the world, you can easily walk into a store and say, hey, I want to buy a Picatin 18 and they'll give you one. In other parts of the world, they're actually very difficult to get. Don't talk to me about the website. When they're on the website, they sell out in seconds. Like both of them just sell out. People are literally sitting there. And guess what? Both of these bags are on <laughs> resale sites and they're going for above retail. I On Fashion File, I saw a few um, Picatin 18s that were going for like $3,000. Um, one was going for like $3,200. Um, bear in mind that this is a, a the Picatin 18 should not be a difficult bag to buy. You should be able to go into the store and ask to buy it. I do feel like Hermes is starting to change the goalposts a little bit now. They're seeing that um, you know, people are willing to do anything basically when their games and shenanigans around and now they're trying to create a game around the Picatin 18 and the Mini Lindy. Bear in mind that this is only in some parts of the world. So I think in the US, the Mini Lindy and the Picatin 18, you should be able to walk into the boutique and say, hey, I'd like to buy a Picatin 18 and they will give you um, the bag, no problem at all. Whereas in Asia, and like a lot of the other like Asian um, countries and Australia, um, I think some parts of Europe as well, it's not that straightforward. You can't just walk in and say you want to buy a Mini Lindy. Those bags are highly coveted now, particularly the Mini Lindy. I do know that people have said that the Mini Lindy in Hong Kong is even considered like a quota bag. So I think that what Hermes are doing with the Picatin 18 and the Mini Lindy is very annoying, but I think it's a sign of the times. They are trying to build a future beyond the Burke and the Kelly and the Constance. They want these bags to be hard, hard to be purchased. And it's something that I find quite irritating. I don't really like the Picatin 18. I do not like the Mini Lindy. I'll tell you the bags I like, and I hope that they don't create games around these bags. They'll be very annoyed. I like the Synhetic. I like that bag a lot. I also like this bag called the Viru. That bag is also just like really cool to me. I believe also the Mini Ruli also has a bit of a game in certain Hermes um, stores. It's not that easy to get depending on the color. I do think that Hermes just basically at this point, like they have created this, you know, this monster. They're trying to control this monster by creating lots of games around certain types of bags. Um, and many people who have tried to buy the Picatin 18 have said it's not that easy in certain jurisdictions. So maybe in your store, there are lots of Picatin 18s, but the fact that the Picatin 18s are going for above retail, that is a sign that they're not that easy to get in the boutique because technically you should be able to just walk into the store and say, you know, do you have a Picatin 18? Yeah, sure. Okay, here you go. But it's not really like that. What do you guys think of this kind of, and this is a gradual thing that's been going on for a few years, but what do you think of the fact that Picatin 18 and the Mini Lindy are not as easy to get as they used to be? What do we think? And again, they're not quota bags. They are not quota bags. We know that but they are becoming very difficult to buy. What are your thoughts on that? I'd love to know. I, I don't remember the store, but I remember someone on Facebook saying that the Picatin 18, you have to be on a wait list in order to buy it. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just pretty crazy what's going on. I'd love to know what you guys think about that. One of my subscribers asked me this really good question. I'll put it up here on the screen. I want to say thank you to 
um, this person for asking the question. Um, it's about whether um, essays get commissions through online orders. So I think we all know, and if you don't know, let me just clarify, essays do not get a commission from website sales. Like on the whole, across the board, across all of their international websites, they will not get the commission. If you are trying to spend money so that you can obviously stand out <laughs> from the crowd and things like that, and get your purchase spent up, you need to make sure you do it in the store. I think something you could do is you could see something on the internet and be like, hey, I saw this on the website. Um, can I order it through you and I'll come and get it in the store in a few days or when can I come and get it from the store? I think you need to be careful with online orders. I feel like online orders should be for things like that, that you're not really too worried about in terms of kind of, you know, buying for purchase history. Or if you're not really looking for a quota back at the moment, but you want to add some things, you don't want the stress of going into the store. Um, you can go and get things like, you know, the fashion jewelry, um, the enamel um, pieces, exa for example. So maybe things like that, but I wouldn't like buy those like commission rich things um, that we always talk about on the website because you're basically you're kind of eating, you're, eat, you're eating your spend and you're kind of wasting it when you could be spending it in the store so that you can qualify for a quota bag. That's, that's at least how I see it. There's also another question here about transferring um, commissions. Can that happen or something like that? I don't know the answer to that question. If any of you do, please make sure that you leave it in the comments below and tell us what you think. But I thought that the question was, the questions were very interesting, particularly the issue of online ordering, because I love how they just have gamified the website. So now they can kind of figure out the people who are ordering on the website are people who kind of understand that, okay, I'm not going to use this towards my spend. It's just so annoying that, you know, the online orders are not counted towards your spend. I think that's really annoying. Some of you guys who are from Canada have told me like, oh my gosh, I don't know why people think that Canada is so easy to score bags. It's super, super competitive. So I was like, okay, let me showcase one of the Canadian boutiques in today's video. And um, it sounds like, you know, it, the, the, this particular store, the one in Vancouver, um, I was reading some reviews. Some reviews were good. Some weren't so good. I want to put the, up this one and I want us to discuss this one because I think this is quite a controversial one. So this particular individual, you can read it up on the screen here, basically went there to buy some stuff. It seems like the everything went well. Then they took out their phone to try and like record a video. They wanted to do a vlog in their words. The security guard checked them, um, you know, and told them off. And I think that hurt their feelings. What do we think about this? I want to tell you what I think. I hope you're telling me what you think in the Premier Chat. Um, my kind of view on this is like, I think that when you're, th these boutiques like Hermes, um, you know, you need to be really careful. Hermes, Chanel and Van Cleef and Arpel in particular are known for being quite stressy about vlogging and taking videos and taking pictures in the store. Um, I've watched so many shopping vlogs and lots of YouTubers who mainly do those vlogs have talked about it time and time again. Many people have said that, you know, that those three brands are particularly stressy about vlogging in the store. like going around and vlogging around in the store um, and things like that. I think that you see there are a lot of bigger channels that do vlogs. I feel like that is when either the store manager knows that YouTuber and knows that they're a good customer or thinks, okay, let them just do it anyway. Or um, like I said, s some YouTubers are also VIP clients. I think that's also something that we don't talk about. There are some YouTubers who are VIPs. So maybe Hermes, Chanel and Van Cleef will be like, okay, let them film. But I think in general, like if you go into like, you know, Hermes, Chanel, VCA and you pull out your phone and try and record a video, they're going to check you, you know? Um, so when I was reading this, I was like, I kind of felt bad for the person because obviously the security guard was like maybe a little bit rude about it. Um, and told them, you know, you can't film here, maybe said it in a way that's rude and the person didn't feel good about themselves. And I think you can see here in the review, they say how they were like running out. The person was like literally running out of the store. Um, you know, I don't, I feel bad for that person. Hey, look guys, I'm wearing a mezz orange again. Um, I feel bad for that person running out of a mezz feeling bad. But at the same time, I feel like they should have known better. Like, if you know this house, you know Hermes, we all know how Hermes feels about social media and about influencers. First of all, they don't even work with celebrities. Like, they don't even work with celebs. Like, that's how serious Hermes is about maintaining what, whatever they think they're maintaining about their image. <laughs> okay, because I don't even really know what they're doing, to be fair. But they're very serious about doing things a certain way, which is the Hermes way. Um, so if they're not going to entertain celebs, 
Um, they're definitely not going to entertain YouTubers and, you know, influencers and bloggers, etc. And maybe this person isn't sane, but maybe this person is an Instagrammer or a blogger and they felt like they could just, you know, film something. So in, f for me, my kind of thing is you need to also be a little bit more discreet. I think a video maybe is a little bit too much. Maybe in a store like that, that's very competitive. There are lots of VIPs and maybe there are lots of clients milling around. Maybe while you're talking to the SA, you can try and take a picture um, or just and, and take a picture, you know, obviously <laughs> with your phone being on silent. I feel like you need to be a little bit more subtle about it. I personally just feel like when it comes to the, the vlogging and the YouTubing in the stores, the people who do it often are people who are good clients of that particular boutique in general, or they or the, ma the store manager and the essays know that person is a blogger and they don't really care. But as a general rule, Chanel, Hermes, Van Cleef and Arpel are very stressy about taking pictures in the store, vlogging in the store. And I remember seeing there was someone on Instagram who posted like this, I don't know, video of VCA and then the person even was like saying, oh my gosh, like on Instagram, they were writing in their posts, like VCA are so stressy about like, you know, shooting a video and they will like clap at you and they literally will be like, put your phone away, stop doing that. So I think you just, you just need to like use common sense. Again, I don't want the person to be shouted at, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, you're kind of inviting it on yourself. We all know how Hermes is like really, really strict about their image and the way they're presented and everything. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Was the security guard doing a little bit too much or should he have just allowed this individual to take their video and to take their vlog? After all, they did buy something. Another requested location was Hermes Seattle, where I found this story. I don't know if we've discussed this before. I feel like I've researched this story before, so I've seen it before, but this is from a Google Reviews of the um, Hermes Seattle store. This story is crazy, <laughs> okay? A husband and wife walk into the store. They they ask straight up, okay, okay, for a quota bag. And they're like told, like, everyone's trying to access these bags, okay? And then they tell them like, okay, we'll, we'll wait as long as it takes. We want to be put on a wait list. They're like, that's not how it works. In order to access those bags, you have to get them through me and you have to buy other things or whatever. Um, you know, I don't know. With stories like this, again, I just feel like sometimes like essays are doing way too much. I mean, we've talked about it on this channel before about how sometimes like essays can, I think, kind of go a bit overboard. This was obviously a couple who clearly have the funds to spend, but don't know the game. Someone coming in and saying, hey, I'd like to buy a Birkin or Kelly cold, um, you know, is going to annoy the sales associates of these really competitive stores like the Seattle um, boutique, because at the end of the day, we all know that there's one-to-one -one spending. They know that, we know that, we know they know that, but they like to pretend that it's not there. So maybe that's why the sales associate just kind of freaked out and kind of flipped out, um, you know, on this husband and wife. But at the end of the day, the essay should not have reacted the way, um, that, that they did. And also, I feel like the husband and wife should also have done a little bit more research into just figuring out like how these bags are attained because I feel like if you even know about the Birkin and the Kelly and the Constance, you know that it is not that simple, particularly a location like Seattle, which, you know, is known for, you know, being the birthplace of a lot of, you know, tech companies. I believe Seattle is where Starbucks was founded as well. So this is, a, you know, a place where there is a lot of money there. I mean, I don't, I don't know, has any, has any one of you scored a bag there with no spend? You know, yes or no. And by no spend, I literally mean zero spend, like yes or no. It doesn't really sound based on this review that you can just walk in there and buy a bag like that. Maybe they thought they could buy a bag and maybe they thought, well, because we have lots of money, we were ready to spend money and we were treated like dirt, we're never coming back here again. I mean, I think that for them that, I think like like we've said before, because those essays get those like pooled commissions together, I think they're just kind of like good riddance. I don't really care because at the end of the day, there'll be someone else who'll come in, who'll want to buy um, you know, a quota bag and they'll be willing to play the game. So I think in those really competitive locations, if you are not ready to play the game, I think, you know, you are going to be clapped at um, by essays like this. They will clap back at you, which is rude, okay? And this essay was out of line, but at the same time, I do feel like the husband and wife um, should basically have known 
um, what was in store for them. They shouldn't just have gone into a very competitive store and asked straight away to buy a Birkin or Kelly. I don't know about that strategy. I'm not really, I mean, with, with the exception of the Parisian boutiques, I just don't really see how that works, particularly in those very um, competitive locations where they're just, there's, there are just so many people who want to buy those bags and they're people who are really, really, really like ready to spend money and they're willing to do what it takes in order to score those bags. As a coda to uh, this video, I want to leave you with something that you guys can think about. I saw this comment on another page about the Hermes journeys and the Hermes game. And this person was basically saying how they felt like Hermes is like the new hot brand right now, but there'll come a time when Hermes is no longer like interesting and people have moved on. I have to be honest with you guys, I don't know <laughs> if that time is going to come anytime soon. I feel like Hermes is, Hermes is going to be like Louis Vuitton, like Hermes is going to be constantly talked about because of their shenanigans and their games, like in each platform, Hermes is different on each platform. So like on TikTok, you get TikTok videos of unboxings, you get TikTok videos of people telling you how to score bags. On Facebook, it's like more of a walled garden where you have those like private Hermes groups, people are showing their scores, people are talking about one-to-one -one spend. On Instagram, you know, it's like these beautiful filtered pictures of, you know, Birkin, Kelly's, and of course on YouTube, we discuss things in more detail. Each platform has its Hermes thing going on. And I, I if anything, I just, I'm going to see that it's going to continue to grow for as long as those bags are gated. For as long as the Constants, the Kelly and the Birkin are put behind this gate, okay, and we can't access them, I think the moment they go back to a, a, a wait list, I, and I believe in the UK it is actually a wait list, so we'll put the UK to, to a side um, for a moment, but the moment like they do that for the entire world, I feel like that's when maybe the Birkin stuff will simmer down a bit, but I think that they've realised there's no real point um, going back to a wait list for these products because it kind of, I don't know, in a really weird way, if you can wait list for the Birkin or the Kelly, it kind of takes away the kind of the fervor and the excitement of playing the game. Of course, I would be happy <laughs> to put my name down for, uh, you know, for any of those quota bags. I wouldn't have an issue with that. But I think that they've realized from a marketing point of view, you create that scarcity by having the game. And I've said this to you guys before. Some of you, you know, you, you're like, no, that's not true. This and this. But I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm not going to fight with you guys on this one issue that I'm about to say now, which is that the bags are plentiful. The bags are in abundance. The bags are available. They just don't want to offer them to certain types of people. That's how I feel. You can't change my mind. No one can change my mind on this thing. I'm sorry. I'm putting my flag here on this. Um, and I think that they know that and that is part of the game as well. So whether Hermes is always going to be hot, I personally think Hermes is always going to be popular and people are always going to be talking about the brand, but I think right now it's fever pitch because of all of the shenanigans and because of all of the games. If you really like what I'm doing, please make sure you like this video. Please ignore my dogs barking. I don't know what's going on with them, but um, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit notifications. It really helps to support me. I have a Q&A video coming next week. Please ask me some questions in the comments. Just say it's like for the Q&A video. Those of you who've already asked me on Instagram, God bless you. Thank you for interacting. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.